swiftly to Ladies the next start list of the PR1 men's single skulls, the men's the version of this event. They have had a massive program. They've raced this morning to get into this event in semi-finals and uh, really looking forward to this race. It's going to be a cracker. So, Julien Hardy, the Frenchman, in lane one. Andy Houghton, you were chatting to him earlier today, weren't you, Greg? I was, yeah. He's looking forward to this race. Years of age. Alexei Chuvashev. Staying at our hotel, actually. I do believe. I had breakfast with him yesterday. <coughs> the Russian, very familiar face on the Paris scene. Roman Polyansky, Paralympic Russia. champion of uh, 1,000 metres. Brazil. Took silver in a famous Italy. race behind Australia's Eric Horry last Attention. year. That's the Italian scholar Fabrizio Caselli. I'm not sure we've seen Rene Pereira of Brazil. There he is, a Brazilian scholar, 37 years of age. And we saw a great shot there of the crews on the start. Quite a long hold from the starter uh, with the blade square and ready in the water. And uh, as we thought, the Russian really has uh, made the best and strongest start. Um, but uh, expecting the Ukrainian scholar here in the centre of the shot to go with him and, uh, and start to get in control. And you see the upright style of Chuvashev there leading out, Polyansky behind him. I mean, Polyansky does like to go out quick, um, but it was Chuvashev who led the World Championships through the 500 metres last year, I seem to recall, in 2017. Extraordinary upper body strength this man has got to... Uh, lost his limbs to um, an explosive accident while serving with the Russian army in uh, Chechnya. The Grossia emblazoned across his chest and uh, I'm sure he'd be motivated by the success of his uh, country's football team doing so well in the World Cup. But football, but this is World Cup rowing and uh, all sorts of things could happen. Brazilian scholars, we can see Rene Pereira 37 years of age, finished fifth in the world last year. He was uh, very competitive, certainly in the first 500 metres, but just lacked that little bit of endurance through the second half of the race to keep him in contention. There's Polyansky, Greg, coming through. Yeah, Polyansky, you'd expect him to come through from Ukraine in, in lane four, but the Brazilian scholar is really being brave. He knows that he's blown up in the past and had issues down the course, but physically he's committing himself to this and he's going to be taking on a lot of pain that he's going to have to deal with throughout the next uh, 1,400 metres. How do you read what Andy Houghton's doing? Because it's interesting, he's, he's had a, a new seat specially moulded, so they try and get every last inch of drive, so he's had this seat specially moulded to his body just to try and get a few sort of tenths of a second speed and, and improve his connection. They yeah. really do look for every single way of... Uh, well, it would be nice if we can have a look at that, um, that British boat in a second as we have a look here. The Ukrainian, as we say, he's the uh, Paralympic champion, um, pushed out in a fantastic race by the Australian, Eric Horay, who's not here. Um, although initially he had planned to be here, so interesting that uh, he's had to change his season's plans. Um, and, uh, yeah, as we see coming through there, Andy Houghton's in fourth place now. And uh, he said he's had a reasonably tough time um, in the last few weeks um, since first racing this season and uh, wants to try and just consolidate his position here, really, in the uh, middle of the field, see if he can keep contact um, with uh, Shuvashev, the, uh, the Russian beside him, and uh, the Brazilian scholar paying now for that early pace. And let's see uh, how that goes on as we're in here, the painful second 500. Well, Andy Houghton's got to be pleased he can have sight of the Brazilian because he must have been wondering Brazilian qualified second behind Polyansky in uh, this morning's semi-final. Polyansky was with the quickest time at 9.44, which was uh, nearly 18 seconds quicker than the, the Russian scholar Chuvashev, who beat Andy Houghton to win the other semi-final. And as you're looking at this, you can see it's one of these situations where the crew's warming up are at the top of your picture and they'll be our lightweight single scholars we're going to see later on today. Um, and 
really you don't want to be close to them when you're racing. You want to have uh, full focus in your boat and uh, the uh, boat's warming up, hopefully politely stopping and making sure they're not sending too much wash onto the course. Now, Polianski, I mean, we've said this before, but he was originally plying his trade in Sprint Kayak, um, but came over to rowing precisely because Spring Kayak wasn't actually in the Olympic sport. And I think that's what rowing has done so well to bring rowing into the Paralympics. And um, since he came over, of course, he won that amazing race in Rio, taking the gold medal, but it was of course over a thousand meters. And then the sport really changed its character over 2000 and he kept his pace, but he was under more pressure, of course, as the race went on, as we saw last year from Eric Horry. But I think what we're seeing there is just the level of um, classification of these athletes, that the disabilities are slightly different. So it'd be very difficult to see a situation where, you know, despite the training that uh, the British scholar Andrew Houghton put in, that he would probably not be able to get up to the speed of uh, Roman Polianski. He does hope to beat this guy, though, doesn't he, Greg? Yeah, well, you can see the uh, the times are really quite tight, but, um, yeah, the Russian scholar here, as we see, he's just settled into a slightly higher pace every stroke, and uh, the 500-metre time was reflecting that. But, um, we have the, uh, the scholars now in the positions they're in, and each boat is the fastest on the course for the position that they're in, so we can only expect the gaps to get bigger, if you know what I'm saying there. Absolutely. Chuvashev is a PE instructor uh, where he studies at the University of Physical Education based in Moscow. And, uh, well, he's been a, a regular competitor. He used to race, of course, Tom Agger. There's Andy Houghton, who uh, had a long wait, didn't he, before he got the British vest when Tom Agger eventually retired. As you say, Tom Agger was established as the uh, British scholar uh, in this event. But uh, now Andy Houghton has made it his own. And uh, you can see such a strong upper body. Good technique, moving the boat very well as he takes that look over his shoulder to look for Shuvashev, uh, the Russian that lane beside him. He actually, um, Andy, Andy Houghton, when he preferred when it went to 2K. In fact, he had a, he had a quicker time relatively over 2K for 1,000 metres than he did over, one, you know, over, over the 1K. So it really did bring out the best in him, the change to 2K. And well, it certainly allows more to happen, doesn't it, as we saw at the World Championships last year where big sprint finishes came this in. This is big for and Horton. Look at what he's doing now. Andy Hatt is now going to be he looking to close this really gap. trying to get back at Chubashev. You see, they're both at similar stroke rates. I mean, the distance between them was, was 13 seconds in the semi-final, but this is a... Uh, a different order of competition now because Houghton is really, really pushing for Chuvashev. And uh, he may not get past him, but the distance behind matters to the Brit. And of course, it matters to Chuvashev because Chuvashev wants to keep that margin. Well, and also with the opportunity for a medal, if we imagine that Eric Horay was in this field, then uh, Andy Houghton would be pushed out into fourth place. Um, so, uh, yeah, he wants to try and close that gap to the Russian as much as he can. Yeah. He was up to about 16 metres on the last time we got a, a gap. So uh, we'll see if he's managed to close that at all with a uh, third 500 push. Blades go in very easy, don't they, for the Ukrainian? It almost seems that there isn't that push like you can see in Andy Houghton that he does through the stroke. It's, uh, I think he's got more on something down. Maybe he's got more use of his lower back or just something that he can get locked on the boat, which gives him an extra bit of zip at the front end. Yeah, well, the boat is moving smoothly, isn't it? As we see the drone shot there, the, uh, the uh, pattern behind the boats the, uh, you use to steer as you look. And you can actually see the boy line very clearly when you're in the boat to see that, yep, you're sat in the centre of the lane, you've got a nice trail of water coming off the back of your boat and a line of puddles beside it that tells you you're doing the right thing. And just keep churning it along and then you see the red boys in the corner of your eye and you know that signals it's 2.50 to go and uh, you're ready for your final push to the line. 
Yeah, and of course, this is where it all started to run ravel for Polianski last year with uh, Eric Horry. So that's really a very important part of the race that the former sprint kayaker ha has worked on through this winter training, actually to maybe be a little more conservative in the first part of the race and just make sure that he's got the beans left in the last 250 metres to hold off the challenge from Eric Horry, even when we are able to see the Australian world champion this season. I'm just checking that gap between the Russian sculler and the Brit. It's now about 19 metres, so um, despite any effort from Andy Houghton, uh, the uh, Russian sculler has just been able to keep moving his boat just slightly quicker, as that boat speed chart also tells us. Um, and so although they're quite closely matched, um, Andy Houghton has a lot to do if he's going to close the gap between him and Shuvashev, who also has plenty to do to catch up with Polianska, who's coming down to the line now. Decent skull from Houghton. I think they'll be pleased with that margin, actually. As Polianski crosses the line, the Paralympic champion takes a gold medal. Over 2K this time, he won over 1K in the Paralympics in Rio. Alexei Chuvashev, the Russian sculler, no stranger to medals in the World Championships or Paralympics takes the silver. Andy Horton from Britain takes the bronze medal. And the Brazilian and the Italian sculler is waiting for Julian Ardi to cross the line. Polianski. Can anyone touch that flying form this year? Eric Horry will be no doubt watching this race with interest and uh, we hope you're recovering well, Eric, and enjoying this presentation from World Rowing. We're really looking forward to seeing you later at the World Championships this year in Plovdiv, Bulgaria. There's your sparring partner. Long draw back past the body at the finish. Early arm break as well, Greg. And that style. So there's confirmation. Roman Polianski in 9.38, 12 seconds in front of Chivashev. And Chivashev.